Hello everybody, my name is Loïc Bayard and I'm the VR trainer here at GoPro. In this full tutorial, we are going to talk about all the aspects of producing and creating a 360 degrees video. So from shooting to post-production and all the way up to uploading it and sharing it. But before we do that, we are going to talk about exactly what is a 360 degrees video and we are going to define a few different words and things that you need to know because we are going to be using them consistently. So let's get on right to it and learn about 360 degrees video. So what exactly is a 360 degrees video? Well, to put it really simply, it's a sphere of video and you are standing at the center of it. So to look all around you, you can use your mobile phone, either swiping with your finger or just looking all around you. You can look at it on a computer, dragging around with your mouth, or you can use a VR headset. So how exactly do you get to that point? Well. It's actually pretty simple. You just need to have multiple cameras filming at the exact same time. What we use most often and what is the configuration of the GoPro Omni is six cameras. So you're gonna have this cube here with one, two, three, four, five, and six different cameras. So you are going to record with those six cameras, you end up with six different videos that you combine into a full sphere using something we call control points that are pixels that a software will find between the different videos to combine them and match them together. And in the end, you end up with this full spherical video. Now, when we are talking about 360 degrees video, there are a few terms that you need to define because we are going to be using them consistently throughout this video series. The first one is something we call an equirectangular view. An equirectangular view is a full sphere, but flattened out to look at it on a computer screen. It's sort of the same thing as the Mercato projection that we use for world maps and that you've seen all your life. You have those distortions between the horizon, the top and the bottom. And these are also two terms that we are going to be using quite a lot. The top in these projections and in 360 degrees video is called the zenith and the bottom is called the nadir. Now, recording 360 video and combining those different video feeds seems pretty easy, but it's actually quite tricky because there are a few different problems that you might encounter. The first one is that you need to have perfect synchronization between your six different cameras. So before the Omni, we used to do that by doing a clap or a movement so that we would have a point in all those six videos that we would know would be the exact same one and we would match those. But this had a problem. Maybe sometimes you had half a frame of difference between those two videos and you would not be able to match them perfectly. So one of the great things about the Omni is that it's a synchronized array. It means that one camera is going to control all the other cameras. This really works as one unit and when you start recording, you are going to start recording at the exact same moment on all the six cameras. And then at the beginning of each frame, the sensors of all the different cameras are going to fire up at the exact same time, which means that you have a pixel accurate synchronization and that it's consistent throughout the video, even if you are shooting for more than two hours. Now, another problem is that you usually have some battery management issues when you are working with multiple cameras. The great thing about Omni is that you have a single plug with an external battery, an external power solution, and you are able to charge the six different cameras at the same time or just work with it from the external power straight. This also helps a lot when you are talking about overeating issues, which can happen sometimes with cameras that are in a tight position. Here, you can even get rid of the internal batteries, work only on external power, which means that a lot of this heat is gonna happen outside of the cameras, which is a great thing. 
Another big problem when you are working with those kind of rigs is that you will have multiple SD cards in multiple cameras. You have to be really organized. You have to find a way to put that on your computer, to review the shots, to make sure that everything works. And the great thing about Omni is that we know the geometry of the rig so well. We know everything so well that allows us to create some really, really great software solution to go with it. And we are going to talk about it more deeply in a future video. So the Omni is really a great way to move forward into creating 360 degrees video with a professional quality. What exactly do we mean when we are talking about professional quality? Well, the output you can get with the Omni is up to 8K at 30 frames per second. We can also get up to 5.7K at 60 frames per second or 4K at 120 frames per second, which allows you to do those very smooth slow motion moments that the GoPro is really renowned for. There are also different photo modes, so single photo, burst, time lapse, night lapse, and those photos will be up to 11K in resolution. Now it's great to have all of those modes, but there's also a very high risk of human error when you are working with 360 degrees video with multiple cameras, because you can sometimes just set up five cameras right and one of the camera is not going to be set up properly. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it can be different frame rates between two cameras and you won't have the perfect synchronization or it can also be different modes, uh, especially if you select a 16 by 9 mode, this won't allow you to create a full spherical view. You're going to have a hole in the middle of your crew rectangular or of your 360 degrees video and it's not going to be usable. You have always to work with 4 by 3 modes. And the great thing about the Omni firmware is that you only have the modes that will work. So 4K is gone because 4K is a 16 by 9 mode on the GoPro Hero 4 Black, uh, but you have 2.7K 4/3, 1440 or 960, and all of the photo modes are in the proper settings. So hopefully now you get what a 360 degrees video is and some of the problems you have to face when you are trying to create one. On top of all of these things, there's one really important notion that you need to understand when you are getting yourself into 360 degrees video, and that notion is parallax. Parallax, uh, to put it really simply, parallax is the fact that when you are looking at one object from two different points of view, you are going to see that object from different angles, and you are going to see the background change or the foreground change. This is a small experiment that uh, maybe you've done when you were in school, when you were younger, to put a finger in front of you, to close one eye and then the other. Well, either your finger, you're going to see it move, or you are going to see the background move and your finger stay in position. Well, this is a basic optical problem, but this is also really crucial to understanding why it is so hard to create quality 360 degrees video. And what we are going to do with the software is always going to be fighting those parallax issues because when something goes from the point of view of one of the camera to the point of view of the other, suddenly you're looking at it from two different angles and you are going to have to deal with those moments when things cross between those cameras and suddenly they don't match perfectly. The thing with Parallax also is that you are always going to have to make a choice between the foreground or the background. You are never going to be able to have something that's one meter away from your cameras and something that's 20 meters away from your cameras stitched perfectly at the exact same time. But there are a few tips and tricks that you can use to correct that and this is what we are going to show you in this full video tutorial. 
So there you have it. Now you have a better sense of what a 360 degree video is and what type of problems we might encounter when trying to create one. In the next video, we are going to look at the Omni and we are going to unbox it, tell you a little bit about what you get when you are buying an Omni. And we are also going to show you what the updating process is. So see you there.